Hey and hello, my name is Gino Samuel and welcome to this 100k Q&A that I decided to do. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for um, allowing us to get to 100,000 subscribers against all odds. Um, of course, this is a channel about a very specific, very strange topic and it's kind of amazing that so many people are so invested in this. I'm amazed at myself too. Um, but anyway, so I sent out a little request for questions and here are the answers in this video there's always lots of people asking questions in the comments about me about the series stuff like that so i decided to put all those questions together in one place and answer them all in one go uh there's been a lot of questions i think over 500 though some have been repeated and so even if your direct exact question is not answered in this video, is not addressed in this video, it's at least uh, answered on behalf of, of someone else's question. So I hope you don't mind that. Anyway, let's start with the first question that was posted. Do your views on Christine apply to all transgender people? And that's a... Uh... <laughs> and we're starting off really, really strong now. My views as in... Um, do you mean if I think negatively about Christine? And do I think that all transgender people are like Christine? Uh, I don't. I don't think that all transgender people are like Christine, nor do I think that any one person of any one specific group or community is the same as anyone else. I don't think one specific person should uh, be representative of the whole community, because hum human beings are so diverse, and you shouldn't let one good person or one, or, or one bad person as well uh, define what a community or a, or a gender, or a, or a race, or a culture is as a whole. It's a very complicated topic, and it should not be viewed as black and white, as so many things are these days. Thanks, Gina, for all your work, and my question will be, how hard was for you to adapt to the way Japanese live, you know, the rules and that kind of stuff? So, in case you don't know, I live in Japan, in Tokyo, and I've lived in Japan on and off for about two and a half years, I think close to three years now. And it's been kind of not that difficult for me because I studied Japanese in university and I got used to the way um, the Japanese culture is from that point. I wasn't that in tune with the animes and the mangas, so I knew it wasn't going to be like the animus that I saw as a child. Uh, I know Japanese culture is pretty pretty different from what, uh, from what is portrayed sometimes by the media. And it's been pretty nice. People are polite, people are very clean. I love that so much. Where slash when did you first learn about Chris Chan and what made you decide to document him slash her so much? So this question was addressed and answered already in my previous 10k Q&A video, um, which was on, in case you don't know, Gino Samuel 2, my first Chris Chan channel, uh, which was uh, later removed by YouTube on Cats of Bullying after part 12. Um, so I answered this as something like, I guess first heard of Christian when I was on B on the 4chan board B. Uh, I was I was being a very edgy teen back then, around 2011 I think, and people have been posting um, posts about whether is Christian real or is he a troll or something like that. I really didn't understand what, what was happening. I thought he was from just j judging from that uh, classic Christian picture, just standing uh, or or sitting like that. I thought he was uh, very um, competitive gamer who likes to win a lot and boast about it. I thought that's what Christian was. I, I didn't know any better. I think it was around the same time that Bob died. So people were posting things like Rip Bob. So I, I learned a bit about Christian back then and I watched his 25th birthday video first and I kind of identified with Chris a lot of the time actually. I was how long ago was this? Nine, nine years ago. I didn't, um, I didn't socialize that much, so I kind of identified with uh, with Chris's plight a lot, I think. But I, I grew out of it since. So I was on and off following Chris Chan since then. But there was big breaks in between with, where I just, of course, was not interested at all. And then sometime in 2017, I think, I started watching videos of... Um, what was that YouTube channel? Uh, Corrupt Gameplays, that's it. Who's this YouTuber? slash gamer who also did streams of watching Christian videos chronologically and that really interested me a lot 
and I wanted to make, or at least I wanted to have a video version of the quickie in a way. You know, the quickie is kind of convoluted. Um, it's very, it's very large, expansive, and kind of messy. You know, it doesn't really go chronologically unless you do the effort of following along all the articles chronologically. So I wanted to have a version like that in video form, um, but with less of the whole quickie attitude about being anti-Chris. You know. Also, I was I was quite amazed that even though Chris is most known on YouTube, or at least was, um, for the videos that he made at the time, there's lots of amazing content. I think in the form of emails, leaked emails, uh, written letters, posts, uh, audio recordings as well, which are not that well known on YouTube. So I decided that I want to mix all of that together into like video form, but like display all the videos and letters and um, audio recordings as well, and phone calls. So I started making this around late 2017, released the first episode on February 11th, 2018 on Gino Samuel 2, and was discovered by QB Forums pretty quickly, um, and it got to 10,000 subscribers in about a, what is it, two months from, from zero, from flat zero to 10,000, it was pretty fast. And by the time the channel was shut down, um, it was around July, no, June, it was June, I just finished part 12 and I had over 30,000 subscribers. I remember that. So yeah, that's the that's the origin point. What is the most rewarding thing to come out of the quick documentary? Um, lots of fans, lots of generous fans, lots of people who decided to check out my music as well. Check out my music channel, link is in the description below. <laughs> Shameless plug, but yes, I do, I do make music as well and lots of people discover that and that's kind of where my heart is truly. You know, so I'm very thankful for uh, some people who decided to take the plunge and decided to like it as well, which is nice. What's your favorite episode of the series so far? I'm... Hmm, the Liquid Chris arc was pretty good, even though uh, Casey took up a lot of the space as well. Other favorites are a lot of the Jackie episodes as well. Part 29 as well was quite fun. That's that's the one with the, um, with the Jenkins Jinkies episode in it. Where do you get all your Chris Chan info from? Do you catalog it yourself? I get it from the Quickie, and most recently, I just basically take everything from Kiwi Farms now. All the archived posts from Kiwi Farms, or at least closed posts, because uh, the Kiwi Farms started existence in 2015, though it did morph into itself from the Quickie Forums, and the Quickie Forums posts themselves were migrated onto Kiwi Farms, so you can still access those posts from like 2012 and 2013 as well. So I follow those along. I go chronologically through the posts and take whatever screen caps the uh, the um, four members took of of Chris's Facebook posts or or, uh, or uh, archived videos and stuff like that. How much digging for information do you do when you produce episodes, and how far into timeline you go for each episode? And do you directly go to Chris for information when you produce an episode? Okay, first first third of the question how much digging for information do you do i do a, d a decent amount of digging i download lots of videos and photos and transcribing and paraphrasing uh articles from the quickie i don't directly quote that's that's the thing i definitely do not do <laughs> and how far in the timeline you go to for each episode uh the point is is that i need to reach around six thousand more or less words in the script per episode. Um, if there's lots of videos, if there's lots of Christian talking, then it's going to be a bit shorter. I think part 46, which hasn't been released yet, but it's kind of finished already, is around 5,400 words because Christian talks slower than me. And if there's lots of talking from my side, then it's close to 7,000 words, which is like 40, part 43, 44, 45, or like almost 7,000, maybe even more. But it's still like less than 40 minutes a lot of the time as well and do you directly go to chris for information i do not go directly to chris no chris has not offered to help me and i'm not interested in getting chris's help but so far nothing too major majorly wrong has been addressed by chris which is which is nice what do you think is in the future for chris chan uh stuff looks very dark uh barbara does not look very well and it's it feels like some of the higher ups in the Kiwi Farm community, such as Null, are still kind of involved and have this contingency plan 
that will go into place whenever her mother dies. Null and Marvin, I think, have something in mind. Uh, I don't know what it is, but we'll have to wait and see because it's very hard to predict what's going to happen next with Chris Chan. How many episodes do you think it'll take to reach modern day? Uh, in my original 10K Q&A, I said maybe part 15. Uh, then I used to say part 50. Now, maybe it's part 60. Maybe 70. <laughs> I really don't know. Because in the first uh, Q&A, when I was still working on part 5, I thought that I would get to B uh, Bob's death at part 10 and finish everything by part 15. I was very grossly wrong about that. What's your favorite thing about making music and documentaries? I like being creative um, about anything, really. I like to make lots of music in different styles. Every album that I make has a different sort of um, goal in mind, a different musical genre that I want to address, and documentaries as well. Uh, Christian thing is definitely its own, its own style and its own character. And if you check out my documentary channel, Gino Samuel 3, link is in the description, um, that definitely has a lot of doc some documentaries, at least for now, but I want to make a lot more. So if you want to watch documentaries that are not about Christian, please subscribe to Gino Samuel 3. Each one has its own style, its own personality, I think, and I like to morph my own style in between all these different genres. What motivates you to keep going? I can't imagine the psychological toll, to be honest. Um, what motivates me is... Um, the uh, compulsion to finish it. Uh, I started it, I want to finish it. And also there's a pretty big demand for it as well, so I want to address that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And as far as psychological toll goes, I don't really think about Chris Chan. It might sound a bit weird if I say that, considering how much time of my life I spend on Chris Chan, but I don't think about Chris Chan. I do talk about him slash her, make videos about him slash her, but I don't actively think or consider my opinions about Chris Chan. I'm very, I think, neutral about this, very emotionally detached. I think it's, I think it's better this way. What is your favorite Chris Chan saga that you have talked about in your documentary so far? Um, probably Liquid Chris is pretty good. Alec Benson Leary is also one of my favorites, which is kind of unfortunate for me that lots of people didn't like that saga because lots of phone calls and found Alec to be boring or at least annoying. Some thought Alec was great, some thought he didn't. It's a very polarizing troll, I think. But yeah, those two especially. How's your day going? It's going pretty okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Will the documentaries stop because you reached modern day, or will it keep us updated as time goes on? Um, they will stop being as consistent as they are at the moment, definitely, because I'll have to wait until I have enough content to make another 40 minute long um, episode again. But yes, they will continue on and on and on. Don't worry about it. One, is the intro song to the documentary your own doing? Yes, it is my own doing. Uh, I make lots of music, and this one especially is called Quick's Theme by Gino Samuel. I composed it just for this series. Uh, I was looking for some royalty-free music that matches the kind of idea that I had for this theme music, but nothing really, really grabbed me as, like, the theme. So I decided to make it myself. I made it in about five hours, all in all, I think. It's got some elements that kind of reflect what Chris's life is like. It's got the childlike... Uh, music box effects. It's very very repetitive as is Chris's own life And it's got just a little bit of glimmer of hope towards the very end But then it it recedes back into the old monotonous dun, 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 As is Chris's own life really Two, have you heard of a counter documentary called beneath the bridge? It's about the trolls who came into Chris's life. Yes, I do know about beneath the bridge by Smoky Chris, that's it, Smoky Chris. It's not Liquid Chris, no. Smoky Chris, yes, and we've talked with each other as well. Um, he has since um, gone away, changed his name and gone away. So I don't know what's happening. I haven't had contact with Smoky f 
for a very long time, so I don't know what's happening with him. Um, do you like being known for your work on the Christian series? People seem to refer to you as the Christian documentary guy, and I'm curious if you want to branch out from that or if you like the niche. Yes, that's definitely true. I am the Christian guy. <laughs> this is the Christian channel, as the banner states as well. I'm very well aware that Chris is the main thing that attracts people to me, um, and this is kind of the goal of the channel. And if I want to make something else that is not Christian, I'm definitely going to put it onto either my music channel, Gino Samuel 1, or my documentary channel, Gino Samuel 3. Um, because I don't want to mix up those audiences together, and people who want Christian may be going to un unsubscribe if I do something else on this channel. So, also, there's a risk that this channel will get taken down eventually by YouTube, so I don't want to risk the other content that is a lot more advertiser-friendly. Yeah, so I want to keep... Um, all the audiences separate in a way, officially. Have you heard of King Cobra JFS? Very similar stories to Chris, but is only developing. I've heard briefly about them. I don't really have any idea who they are, so I'm, I'm not really interested either. Has your mental health been affected, affected by the channel? No, I'm okay. Don't worry about me. Do you ever dream of Chris Chan? I ask this because usually when I study something deeply for a long time, I start to have nightmares slash fever dreams of whatever I was studying. If so, what are they like? I have never dreamed of Chris Chan. Don't worry about me. Though some of my audience does. It's kind of disconcerting. Who is your favorite character in the comic? Matt Chen, I guess, because he's so overpowered. He's so OP. And he can see everyone all the time. It's kind of like God. It's kind of cool. And I like purple, because purple is my favorite color, so Magic Chan. Purple Magic Chan is my favorite. Will you ever interview Christine? Um, no, I have no intentions of interviewing Christine. We have spoken, messaged each other briefly before, in several instances, but no, I don't have any interest in any interviews, because, in case you don't know, at the moment, Christine allegedly claims to be possessed by Sonichu, and Sonichu is purportedly speaking through Christine's body for seven months now and Sonichu through Christine's body has made several interviews recently and they're not very coherent you can't really get much information out of him him being Sonichu at the moment um, whatever whatever the situation is Chris has been very unstable mentally for a very long time now and it's kind of pointless to do an interview I think Favorite Christian event to read out loud? Maybe the Jenkins Jinkies backstory. <laughs> I like that a lot. Um, some people have asked if that was influenced by the trolls, like Marvin or Alec or, or, or someone at that time. And they said no, it was something like, quote unquote, too autistic for them to come up with. It was all Chris. It was all Chris's ideas. To what extent does Christine either communicate with you or attempt to? We know she's aware, but I'm curious how far distanced you are from your subject matter. She has messaged me before through Twitter mostly, Twitter DMs. The first time was actually complaining about um, a picture of Chris's dirty bathroom, old dirty bathroom that I used as, as the background image of my live stream one time. And I also kind of insulted her friend and she kind of yelled at me through, through Twitter because of that. But after that, she kind of warmed up I think she even offered to make me uh, make a Gino Chu card like for her for my little pony card game but I but I declined the offer what is your favorite instrument I like keyboards I like keyboard a lot uh, though I mostly main bass these days but keyboard I think I'm best at I guess that's why I like it the most because it's easiest for me to play I mean, I do have a lot of guitars, because I, I need to play guitar music as well for my music, but keys are the most uh, versatile for me to play. So I think keyboards, yeah. This is a Korg TR Music Workstation, in case you're wondering. It's pretty good. It's pretty old, but pretty reliable, pretty strong. Do you have plans to make a documentary on another person when you reach Modern Day Christian? I have been making documentaries already on my documentary channel, Genos and Mill 3. Link is in the description. Um, there's one about the PMRC and music censorship in 1985 that's a pretty long long form documentary and currently I'm working through uh, an anthology series of yokai or Japanese monsters of folklore myth and folklore I've done maybe four so far but the next one number five I think is 
It's gonna be about the Kappa, and it's gonna be the longest one so far. So please check it out. But I have plans for maybe about 70 separate topics, so they will come out eventually. I think they'll come out a lot faster when I'm not focused on Chris so much. Same with music too. In your opinion, what saga slash arc was the funniest to document and which was the worst? The Liquid Saga was hilarious, but the Julie Blue Spike Saga was very sickening. Um, yeah, as I said before, Liquid, Liquid Chris was pretty fun. So was the Alec Benson Leary. And um, the more recent ones actually is also pretty interesting. Like about the troll Jeff slash Francine, which I think was a very short-lived saga, but it was kind of fun as well. Julie Blue Spike, of course, not fun. And honestly, most of the episodes with just Facebook posts, I really dislike to make. Ironically, most people like that more than the videos. <laughs> I get more complaints about the episodes being mostly focused on videos. Um, and I find those, to me, the most fun to make. Whereas, the least fun to make are the ones where I'm talking all the time. And those are the ones that the audience enjoys the most. Which is like... I can't, I can't win with you people. <laughs> what are your plans after you complete the Christian story? Will you move, will you be moving on to another person? Um, as I said before, I'll be making documentaries during this and after this, uh, mostly about topics and events rather than certain people. But I do have some people in mind, such as William McGonagall, the so-called worst poet in history, and also eventually maybe G.G. Allen, a comprehensive history as well. Do you enjoy making the series or is it an annoying chore? Yes. I got a few. How much time during a day is spent researching history? Christory, I mean. And do you have a set folder slash collection of research like vids, pics, chat logs, and how big is it? Like how many gigs and numbers of files? Um... During a day, it depends, but it can be a long time. It could be one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, definitely possible during a day. How big are my folders? I have folders for just the pictures. That's in the many, many gigs of gigs, maybe 10 or 20 gigs. I also have a video folder, all chronologically ordered into years and months. And that's also many, many tens of gigs, I think, as well. Number three, do you plan on interviewing people that have interacted with Chris? Uh, no, I do not. I'm not interested in that at all. And I imagine people are not that interested in me either, especially the trolls or just the normal people who happen to be involved in Chris's life somehow. Number four, so far, which part of the series made you die inside the most? So far? Maybe the, uh, the Fanta. Maybe the Fanta. As far as I can recall. Have you ever lost it while recording, like laughing or something like that? Yes, I have. Uh, I made one video just just of a brief clip of me laughing while while reading out Jenkins Jinky's backstory. That was, that was quite hilarious. Also, recently, part 42, I think, I laughed a lot when when uh, Chris was talking about on Facebook how, how Roaster always had a Virginia and uh, Missy Cup milking breasts. That was also really good. I like that a lot. Do you actually know Japanese? If so, are you also living there and how long? Also, nice plastic love cover. Thank you so much. So, I, I made a cover of plastic love around two years ago now. And I do live in Japan. I work here as an English teacher and I do know Japanese, though not very well. My listening and understanding is a lot better than my speaking and writing. Do you like prog rock? Yes, I do. I do like it a lot. It's probably my favorite genre of music. I like Yes, Marillion, King Crimson, Pink Floyd, uh, Frank Zappa, Arena, a bit of Asia. I like lots of stuff, honestly. Were you a troll? No, I was not. I was here after everything was over, pretty much. Some people did think that I was Liquid Chris for a while, which was kind of weird, because my voice was the same as Liquid Chris somehow. And some people also thought that I was Clyde Cash. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. What is, what is your favorite kind of sandwich? I like stuff with, with 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 green stuff inside. Have you had to deal with any red herrings or just people trying to intentionally muddy the waters while you are doing research? No, actually people have been trying to clarify things for me. <laughs> Funnily enough, I actually got a private YouTube message back when those were still a thing in the during the original run of the series of someone who posted a link to a conversation between Liquid Chris and Clyde Cash, which I later posted on in in the actual 
documentary, but it, it was not available on the quickie at that point, so I, I don't know where he got that from, but I'm very grateful that it did eventually end up on the internet again. And then there was another major member of Kiwi Farms and the quickie as well, who also helped me out in clarifying some things about future emails that are coming up in maybe part 47 as well. Do you regret starting the series? <laughs> also, what are your hobbies and other than making videos? I I do not regret the series, I guess, but I do feel like I have to finish it rather than I want to finish it, you know? It's a, it's a bit of a different dynamic now. Also, what are your hobbies other than making videos, making music, making other dogs as well? Is it worrisome knowing Christine is watching your videos and how is it how how has that affected your work on the videos? It's not worrying at all. I don't mind at all. I'm not going to change anything to to please Christine or or Sonichu, who are, whoever it may be now, and it's not affected my work. I think. Why didn't you like living in Ireland? I thought it was very dirty, very messy, um, less job opportunities as well. I think those those are the main things, and that's why I'm in Japan right now. What's the weirdest thing you have to say for the documentary? That's pretty much every episode, man. I don't really have one, one specific one. <laughs> Are you slowly becoming Christian? Nope. Have you been in contact with any of the trolls like Clyde Cash, Liquid Chris, Blue Spike, etc.? If you don't mind sharing, can you see what was discussed? Great videos, Gino. I'm also done watching the series for a second time. Damn. Thank you, Tim. Um, I have not had direct contact with any of those guys, I think, but I did um, have a brief, like maybe two sentence exchange on Discord between me and Marvin, who was the man in the pickle suit. That was the extent of that. I do know that Emily slash Kim Wilson slash all the other gal pals that she played online are is watching the videos and does comment on them as well. I do know that. If you could highlight your personal favorite part of Chris Chan's life. Favorite part? Favorite part? Um, I guess... I guess the the coming out, the coming out time period where where she was very um, in control of herself, very confident in herself, and uh, getting semi naked for like a burlesque show. That's very positive. No, that's that's nice. That's nice. Since I know you released music, when will you cover Stoney and a Cute Girl? Never, never. How did you discover your passion for music, and who would you say you look up to as musical creators? Love all the work you do. Thank you, San Fan Seven. Um, I discovered music very, very early on because I come from a family of musicians. I probably started playing piano when I was less than one year old, so I've been making music a lot longer than I have been making documentaries. And um, musical creators, I look up to Marillion, Muse, yes, basically my musical influences. And oh, and Steely Dan, definitely. Lately, Steely Dan, I've been binging them. Does it feel cool knowing you've made perhaps the most comprehensive documentary on an individual's life ever? Kind of. Kind of nice. Kind of scary. Kind of sad that I'll be probably known as the Christian guy forever. What is the typical process for making an episode and approximately how long does each one take? Uh, it could take up to uh, from two weeks up to four weeks, definitely. Um, first I have to write the script. Because I'm going through the chron the chronological postings on Kiwi Farms and the Quickie, the Quickie chronology as well, month by month, week by week, day by day, and based on those, I compile a, a script of between 5,400 words and 7,000 words, depending on what kind of content is inside. And there's no really s no real predetermined structure on what will the episode be. I'll just keep writing until I have that uh, word count done and I'll eventually somehow find a way to wrap it up at the very end. Then comes the narration recording, which usually takes one day now. I mean, just over over the course of one day, it could take... It, could, it also, depending on how long this the script is and how much talking there is, could, could be up to five hours just recording the narration. And after that, I edit out all the mistakes, all the flubs, all the ums and the uhs and the... which happens a lot as well. And, and then after that, I put them into the video project file, and then and then I start editing down all the uh, all the all the spoken word sections, and I work on the pacing during that. Once the pacing for a certain section is done, I'll I'll be moving on to adding music, and then adding videos and photos and images as well. 
and yes, the editing could take also a week or two. Do you have a history of making documentaries, or was this massive project your first go around? Favorite ice cream flavor, and why? Um, yes, this is kind of my first run of a documentary, and well, this is the second first run because I mean, the, in the first uh, actual run on my Geno Samuel 2 channel, um, I got up to part 13, part 12 or 13, and some things did change. I did. Um, improve some things, I think, for the versions of those parts on this channel. So it did, I think, improve a bit. At first I was very kind of quiet about it. This is the story of Chris Chan. I think you can still find them on the Comprehensive History Archive channel, which is not made by me. You, you, you can still find the original episodes there. I don't like them very much. I wish they would go away. <laughs> and favorite flavor of ice cream? Maybe cookies and cream, because it's so crunchy, but sweet and creamy. Do your family and friends know about the Christian series, and what do they think of it if they do? Yes, they do know about it. Um, my parents watch it and like it, I guess. Uh, my goof knows about it too. She doesn't watch it, but she appreciates the hustle. What is the most interesting part of Christory to you? Mm, I guess I like the early classic years of, of Christian making videos. I think that's the most interesting part for me. Um, because Chris at that time was a lot more gullible than she is now. I, maybe, maybe not anymore. I mean, there was there was a period <laughs> where she was a lot more aware of, of how things in life worked. And then the idea guys destroyed that all, all over again. And she became more gullible than ever. Um, but yeah, the first the first few few years... Of Chris in that classic striped shirt. Maybe those, that's my favorite time. What sides of the story were you in? Do you believe Christian actions was to blame for his misadventures, or do you think the trolls are the main forces in his or her misfortune? Yes, both are to blame. Both Chris, both the trolls. Also, don't forget the parents, the parents as well. Everybody, honestly, is at fault. There's no good guys here, except Maybe, maybe Michael Snyder, I guess. Maybe, maybe that's the best one. <laughs> it's a tricky story because you can't really be on one side or the other. I mean, you can, I guess. You can see some sides as more worse than the other bad sides, but I think it's very evenly bad all around. Has the documentary made a personal impact on your own outlook towards life? I want to say I now look at life and the nature versus nurture aspect differently. By watching your documentary, it makes me thank my mother for the hardships she went through, raising me on her own without corrupting my outlook with her own worldviews. In all, I want to say that you have opened the door to new ideas on, on nature versus nurture and how individuals respond to the conflict. More specifically, how much influence our parents have on us as we develop. As I mentioned before, yes, parents and um, the whole growing up aspect is hugely important for for child and parent. Um, I think that's something that you have to keep in mind if you're, if you're wanting to be a parent or if you're a parent already. It's a difficult situation here and I'm I'm grateful that, that 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 people do see some positive out of this, out of out of me showing this very negative life. I guess that makes me feel good. You can take this, um, take this story, this telling of a of a life, whichever way you want, honestly, because I make it so neutral and vague that you can either take it as a something to laugh at, something to cry at, something to fall asleep to, something to watch intensely. So I do think it's great that so many people enjoy it in so many different ways, which is nice. Has your overall personal opinion on Chris changed very much since you started making the series? No need to disclose the opinions, only if they change much. Um, they have, honestly, they have. Because I think that happens a lot, actually, once you start exploring Chris's life more in depth. You might even start off watching this series as something to laugh at because you know about Chris Chan, so you, you see 45 episodes of Chris Chan. Wow, I'm gonna have a really good time, no? So, and then and then you start watching it, then you start crying, and then you realize that this is something you didn't expect to happen. And that happened a lot as I, as I read through the comments. I read all the comments as much as I can, honestly. I sometimes don't read the replies to the comments, but the first original comments, I do at least skim through all of them. So don't worry, I see everything. So I see I see those kind of comments a lot about people discovering truly what Chris Shan the story is like and they do feel a bit sad about it. 
when the series comes to an end, will we get bloopers for each part similar to how you did for how it feels to record Christian, a comprehensive history? And if so, will the bloopers be released as one big compilation or will the bloopers for each part will be released as their own respective parts? Also, as musician yourself, what are your thoughts on Chris's musical efforts? Do you think they're humorous? And do you plan, if at all, to do covers for the Christian and the Hedgehog Boys albums? If so, will it be as a way to celebrate the series reaching its 50th episode? Or will it serve as a way to celebrate the series when it does finish? Or will it be a subscriber special? Um, I won't do a blooper reel again, probably, because I honestly do not break down as much as you think I do. Um, I find it quite boring to record this stuff on the odd occasion, like in part 29 and part 42, as I mentioned before, the whole uh, ovaries thing. Like, there are some brief moments that do make me laugh a lot, but honestly, it's pretty monotonous. It's pretty frustrating to get the pronunciations and and speaking right, because I do have a bit of a stutter, if you didn't notice already, so that kind of infuriates me sometimes. It's not, it's not that fun, honestly. And as a musician, I don't think Chris's efforts are all that interesting, <laughs> good, musically at least, and I would not be doing any covers of Chris Chan's covers of other songs. That's not what I want to do. I want to keep my music co completely separate, apart from the opening credits theme. Apart from that, I don't want to involve Chris at all with my music. Have there been any interesting topics or details you have to leave out of the documentary due to time or quality concerns? Do you think you'll ever make a kind of bonus video with cut or extra content? Thank you for your hard work on the series. Wish you luck on your future efforts. Thank you, Ardakasalanya. There has been stuff that didn't make it into the documentary, um, mostly because it goes nowhere. It's just a thing that happened, but with no real impact on anything whatsoever. Such as there's some detailed accounts of people requesting commissions from Chris and the uh, com conversation exchanges they, they had with them. Are kind of interesting, I guess, but just takes up too much time anyway. And nothing ever comes of it. Chris never made any videos. It's just all private conversations that just um, explore Chris's sexuality, I guess. But... It didn't really go anywhere, so I decided to leave it out. But one thing I did leave out unintentionally was at around part 12, during during that period where Joshua Martinez is pretending to be Vanessa Hudgens, um, Chris is trying to show her that he is worthy of being in the movie with her by making an audition tape and showing what kind of acting situations he can get himself in and see how how strong he is as an actor and that whole audition tape video is not in the dock actually and i didn't include that because i did not know it existed or i forgot about it it was only after i finished editing part 12 that i realized oh shit i left something out and it's too late now but yeah that's one that's like the biggest thing that i left out but, but it was unintentionally either so if i if i were to do it again on geno samuel 2.2 I would include that again, definitely. Do you plan to document other lol cows in the same way that you have documented Chris? If so, who comes to mind? I would not do lol cows anymore after this, definitely. I'm more interested in other kind of people like William McGonagall, like I mentioned before, and J.J. Allen. And I don't think I have any other particular people that I want to do doc documentaries on. It's all about events and times and stuff like that. What do your neighbors think of you shouting the, the stuff Chris says? Um, luckily, we don't have next door neighbors, like wall to wall neighbors, because our apartment building is actually, I guess, not that big. So our single apartment covers the whole floor of our building. So, so there's no neighbors side to side, but there is one upstairs, one, one downstairs though, but they don't complain about the uh, yelling, thankfully. Was the change in the introduction a result of the transition from Chris Chan's gender identity at the point of the videos, or influenced by Chris Chan asking you, by the way, I love your videos. Thank you, Saito Sakamoto. No, the change was always going to happen. It was decreed, so, about two years ago. As Chris changed his identity into a woman, then so with the dog as well. It had nothing to do with anyone else's input, uh, be it Chris herself or her defenders or white knights or friends or what have you that's all completely my decision and understandably people have been against it and for it pretty strongly 
After you quit your first attempt at the Christian documentary, what made you come back and give it another try? Honestly, what made me quit was that my channel got terminated. <laughs> so, so that was a big deal breaker right there. But also, I kind of wanted it to end as well at the time because I was under a lot of mental strain from the from the content of the series and also I was moving to Japan and that was putting a lot of pressure on me as well so I was kind of glad that I had to I had to kind of stop at that point and I did say it back then and I was true to my word that I was gonna come back I was gonna revamp the series again and keep going when I was ready and I did so Hi Gino, I love your content. Chris Chen has led a mundane but remarkable life, and you have documented most of it. I think you are qualified to answer this question. What is the best and worst moment of Chris's life? What is his slash her ultimate high point? And what is the lowest she he has sunk? Best? Pretty good was was all the times that Chris went to the um, Impulse nightclub. Gay nightclub. Because, oh, excuse me. <sighs> Chris was definitely happy with herself at that time. Also winning the Sonic Chew sweepstakes. Sonic sweepstakes, not Sonic Chew sweepstakes, I wish. Um, which also might be the catalyst for the rest of Chris's life, really. There's like periods of time where Chris was really doing well and t and and times when Chris was doing really bad. Um, the, the whole opening up to being a Tom Girl was quite difficult, I think, for uh, Chris. Uh, with, uh, with his mother threatening to kill herself because she thought that Chris was going to kill her and stuff like that. That's 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 pretty bad, I think, personally. You know, coming from someone who is so 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 close to Chris. The lowest she has sunk um any any day now, really, honestly. That's it's pretty low, I think. Um it's kind of difficult to say whether Chris truly believes that this is happening, whether Sonic is in her body, or she's just wishing it to be true really, really hard. In either way, it's very difficult to kind of measure just truly what Chris is thinking at this moment because Chris is very, very unstable right now and needs some serious help. What do you think a Christian biopic should be like? I ask this because I'm an aspiring filmmaker and would like to tackle Christian on film. Uh, first, you have to tackle Christian before you can tackle that. If you can, then please go ahead, because making a biopic based on certain people, on like real people, you you have to get their permission to do this, obviously, and you have to have some input, I, I think, at least. I kind of managed to get away with it for so long by, you know, doing this by myself without any, any input from Chris. But now since Chris is here and watching, or Sonic is at least, I don't know, or, or is it Magic Gen, I did not get a cease and desist. Chris does not wish me at all to stop it so it's going it's going well for me at least but yeah if if we're talking about biopics it's kind of difficult to to sum up chris's life in a succinct way like in a two-hour movie because i think that's very difficult yeah it, the the story pretty much really has to change a lot because there's too much to tell it's too complicated just to sum up in, t in two hours or so opinion of casey as a troll compared to everyone else uh, she's very grating, I guess, to listen to sometimes. So, sometimes she's quite pleasant, sometimes she's grating, uh, sometimes very hypocritical considering how, um, how profound she was whenever she complains to Chris about uh, losing weight and stuff like that. I think it's just projection is what was happening there. She spent a lot of time with Chris. Some people might not know, but there are over 23 hours of recorded Casey calls with Chris. So she spent a lot of her time forking around with Chris. When can we expect more music from you? New music is coming out eventually. It's unlikely to be this year, but I maybe I'll drop some hints, some uh, sneak peeks as well on my music channel. I'm aiming towards an early 2021 release of a sort of city pop album, I think. Very funkadelic, very, very dancey. I think you'll like it. What does it feel to have caused a boom in quick interest? I acknowledge that it may have caused some negative impact towards Chris. For that, I apologize. But also, I cannot be responsible for the good and bad actions that, that anyone does just simply because they were inspired by my documentary. That's, that's kind of dumb, I think. It's, it's like blaming the Matrix for the kids at Columbine. I don't influence anything. It's all up to you. It's all up to you. Whatever way you want to use this documentary, either as an 
as an excuse to be a bad person or just you know just to watch it as entertainment. You mentioned in the past Q&A session that you kind of had four languages, having come from Lithuania and lived in Era. Therefore, I just wanted to ask, on will Guelga agot? Being Welsh, I don't understand much of it, but outsiders often believe I should. Thanks for your thoughts and keep up the good work. Gurv Mahagat. Thank you, Reese. I don't speak Irish anymore. I used to, definitely for a school for primary and secondary school, but I don't. I left that behind me after the uh, leaving certificate exam. That's all just came out of my head. And I made room for Spanish, I think, for something else at least, because that was just taking up too much space in my head. Given the whole Chris's point of view angle that you gave as the reason for using feminine pronouns in your narration, will you be using masculine ones while you cover Chris claiming to be body swapped with the various sonnet Jews? Kind of. Kind of. You know, the whole sw switching feminine pronouns thing was very, was a very hot topic, lo drew lots of hate, and probably un unsubscriptions as well, and lots of dislikes. But I think that Chris at least believes that she is a woman, full-on woman. Whether you believe it or not is up, is totally up to you, and you can choose to call Chris a he, but Chris is, as far as Chris is aware, a woman, and I don't think has ever, f um, how, how should I say this? She, she has never lost track of that, that state of mind. You know, when when she was pretending to be like trolls or something like that, it was very obvious that she was pretending, that she was pretending to be pretending <laughs> as well. Um, but Chris never pretended to be a woman. She is a woman as far as she thinks she is, I think. At the moment, with the whole Sanchi possession, um, I feel like Chris does forget that she is supposed to be Sanchi at times, which makes me think that I'll be using lots of allegedly, supposedly, claims to be, like, language when it comes to that part in the story. I'll have to see if I choose he or she uh, pronouns or not, I'm still not sure. My question, how's life with you with the coronavirus and such? Um, personally, I live in Japan, so that means that I don't have that many issues with corona. Um, yesterday was the biggest number of positive cases in one day in Tokyo, which was over 500, which if you compare with the USA, it's rookie numbers. So yeah, we're pretty much just carrying on as before, just lots of hand sanitizer and everyone's wearing masks voluntarily. You know, there, uh, there's no, there's no law. It's actually illegal for, for the government to enforce such a law as wearing a mask, but we're all just doing it out of courtesy and out of being nice, you know? It's, 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 it's going all right. Will you eventually talk about yourself and this documentary during the documentary? Yeah, I will. I'll refer to myself in the third person and talk about Gino making a documentary about Chris Chan. It's going to be quite bizarre. It's probably coming up in maybe part 55 or something like that. This is a serious question. Why do people always do Q&As when they hit certain amounts of subscribers? I never watch Q&A videos, so it's always kind of a letdown when people make those, but I'm always happy to have more quick documentary videos to watch. Well, yeah, as you say, you, you never watch them, and you're probably not going to watch this either, so, like, it's not a big deal, just don't watch it. It's, like, it's, it's not required contents to watch. Which single saga do you think has the most impact on Chris's life? Why? It feels like the Idea Guy saga was really, really intense. It got a lot of a lot of bad ideas into Chris's head, which Chris continues to stick with, even though she despises the Idea Guys, or so she says, but still adheres to what they said to her, like the ideas, the um, the characters that they introduced as well. She still sticks with them, even though she despises the Idea Guys. And this has been going on for quite a while. And also the Dimensional Merge, I think, as well. She's still very very strongly for the Dimensional Merge, that's why she sw swapped bodies with Sonichu, and she's working very hard in C197 to merge dimensions. So yeah, the idea guys for me. While living in Japan, what was your most and least favorite food to eat? Most favorite? I like sushi a lot. Also yakisoba. That's pretty good too. Um, least favorite food? Definitely natto, which is fermented soybeans. It smells like poop. I don't like it. Congrats on 100k, man. I think I speak for everyone when I say 
that it feels like some divine synchronicity that you ended up being the one to tell the full tale of Quick, as no one else could have done it justice. While not getting suspended off YouTube nowadays is pretty impressive, getting the stamp of approval from your living subject while making a 40 hour documentary of their repressed memories is just a whole nother level. Um, somehow it seems fitting that Chris's life story would conclude in some retcon filled meta dialogue with his narrator all whilst time traveling to prevent the start of a pandemic lockdown so he can 1. return to his body, 2. merge multiple dimensions and 3. attend a brony convention. What a time to be alive. Thanks for everything you do and know we'll all be cheering Truman Show style when Chris finally opens up a door in the skyline, waves goodbye and walks off to meet you and all his husbands and wives in the world beyond. As for a question, you gotta tell me who would win in a drag race between you on a bike and Barb in her fancy race car. I've played it out in my mind a thousand times but can never quite see how it ends. I'm rooting for you man but I just don't know. Shut the fuck up Moon Rabbit. What's your favorite song that you have made? That's a cool one. I like Chameleon from my first album and also I like Travelin from the End Vienna album. Those two are really good. They're a bit longer too. I mean, they're each over 10 minutes. So yeah, I do like the longer pieces because I like prog rock, but maybe those two. Where are you from? I'm from Lithuania. What brought you from Lithuania to Japan? Ireland. Which is better, French toast or pancakes? Pancakes. Fortnite! Favorite yokai? I like the, um, I like the kapas. They're very, they're very kinky. They like butt balls a lot. And they have like a depression on the top of their head. That's kind of bizarre too. I like them. They're kind of, they're, they're, they're slimy too, literally and, me and metaphorically. But they're very honest and they're very, they're very uh, polite as well. Kind of, kind of like Japanese people. Will the idea guys be covered as soon as they appear or will they be kept a mystery temporarily until they are discovered chronologically and then followed by going back to see what they have actually been doing behind the scenes? Um, I'll be keeping with the style of the previous trolls where now, after everything has passed and after everything has been leaked, I'll be showing it as it happened, not when it was leaked, if possible. So I'll be doing the same thing with the idea guys. Like I'll say that they... Like I will say that they appeared, they started contact, and this is what they did with, with, with Chris. So once we reach to current day Christian, do you have plans to pitch a proper Christian documentary to a studio like Netflix or Hulu? Will you think there will be a pushback from the public? Have you seen Tiger King, especially when they mentioned that Tiger King is the most documented person? I have not seen Tiger King, actually. One of the few people here, I think. And I don't plan to pitch this anywhere because I don't really want to make money directly from this as well because there's lots of people that have to be involved in this to be for it to be okay right like chris her mother megan michael snyder every single troll who who took part in this like they all have they all have to have a say in this no you, you just can't put this on on netflix and just make it happen so then i think it's impossible for this to happen which is good i think just stay on youtube what kind of music do you listen to and who's your favorite artist? I have lots of favorite artists and I listen to lots of music in a in a in a repetitive binge like fashion as in I I find one artist that, that I really like and I listen to them all the time and only them all the time and then once I find someone else I'm going to listen to them all the time all the time every song all the time just them and then I move on to another artist. So at at the moment it's Steely Dan and Donald Fagan, at least the Madfly album. I want to check out his, his other solo works as well because I've heard some songs on YouTube and I kind of like them as well. But yeah, the Nightfly, absolutely astounding album. Jesus. Do you think Christine has any chance of turning her life around at this point or will she only get worse? I think she'll only get worse, honestly. It's kind of difficult for her to, to be convinced of any other reality other than her own. Which is why she's in this mess in the first place, because she kind of rejected reality and substituted with her own, as Adam Savage would say. How long did it take to subtitle the Lars conversation? Generally, one of the funniest things on this website. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Hemo Buds. Um, yeah, the voice calls and the phone calls and the voice recordings are some of the most difficult things to edit for me, because I have to sync up the, the subtitles with when they are spoken, and then also... I copy from the transcriptions from the quickie, but the quickie is not as accurate as I would like it, so then I have to kind of retranscribe everything anyway. 
So, yeah, it took a long time. And the reason part 33 with the Lars Call was released a day after 32 it was not because 33 was so easy to make, but rather it was because parts 31 and 32 were so easy to make because they were mostly just videos. And it's the most easiest thing for me to edit. But the voice calls, Jesus Christ, I hate them so much. But they are interesting, and I want them to be in the videos because they're interesting, and I think they're relevant to the story, but I don't like editing them because it takes so long. <laughs> and it would be much easier if I just summarized them, but I think they're too juicy to leave out. Um, so I, I do edit them, of course. I, did, I edit them a lot. Like sometimes up to 70% is just cut directly out of it. Like the whole Lars call is about an hour and a half, and in the doc it's about 30 minutes long. And some people complain that it's unedited phone calls that I just take into my documentary, which is kind of a compliment, I guess, because they, they don't notice that it's all edited. <laughs> there could honestly be up to 10 minutes space cut out between one word and the next, and no one noticed, which is kind of cool. You wake up in Charlottesville with only $25 in your pocket and your camera. What do you do? Um... Why, why would I be in Charlottesville? And this this has nothing to do with Christian, right? Probably not. How did you really? How did? Huh? How 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 did you originally discover YouTube? That's a that's a that's a good question, actually. How did I discover YouTube? Did did I even watch? I mean, I didn't have free reign of the internet until I was about fifteen years old, and the first thing I watched was probably I a, a yes live performance. So maybe that. I guess. What happened at the Battle of Stalingrad that you're keeping a secret? I've inquired for so long now, with no satisfaction. You know something about it th that I don't. Please, Daddy English teacher, I need to know. How do you feel about the Battle of Stalingrad? And what would you have done differently? Thank you. Fuck you, Stalingrad guy. I know it's you, just the dink. Three questions. Stalingrad? Stalingrad guy? What's the deal? I don't know, man. I, don't, <laughs> I have no idea how this started. And I'm, I kind of like it though. You had a bit of animosity in your voice when talking about Barb in the early videos. Are there any people involved in Chris's lore that you personally don't like? I probably, probably did have more strong opinions towards some of the characters in the, in the story early on before I finally found my own voice and the way that the uh, story is going now, the way it's being told now. So I would probably remove that animosity if I, if I were to redo it again, again. For Geno Samuel 2.2, please subscribe to that one. <laughs> but I do feel a bit more neutral towards everyone now. I just kind of accept the events as they are. I, I accept the people as they are. I don't judge. I just say what happens. I don't care. And that's, I think, the right attitude to have. Do you have helpers with the editing or the research? Nope. Unless you want to volunteer something. But no, I didn't. I don't have active helpers. Uh, there was a guy who who helped me restore and uh, um, upscale some photos recently, and he got a little bit of a bit of a payment for that. So that was really nice, and I thanked him in the credits. Also, some of the past trolls I think offered some information as well. So it's all well and good, but no, I I'm very protective of my work. I don't want anyone else to uh, touch this. Hey man, been a fan since the original version of the documentary before it got taken down. I just got one question. Has Super Mega or Matt and Ryan ever approached you to be in a podcast or in a Let's Play? Do you play on going on their channel some... Oh, do you plan on going on their channel sometime in the future? Love your work. Thank you, Big Fart... Thank you, Big Fart Face. Um, Matt has been messaging me quite a, quite a bit about, um, about what I'm doing, be it either Chris Chan or music as well. And Super Mega have talked about the Chris Chan channel on their podcast and Matt has invited me to go whenever we have time whenever we can plan out the time I think we're we're all three of us are kind of busy now and since I live in Japan the uh, time difference is a bit difficult but I don't play games at all so a let's play is out of the question but yeah hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll make it to the podcast one day one day you're such a feminine estrogen filled little man thank you why are you insulting the entire trans community by feeding Chris's delusion? Well, Wobbles and Bean, some trans people do feel the same as you. They don't feel that Chris is legitimately a trans person. 
while other trans people do think despite every bad thing that Chris has done she should deserve the respect to be treated as a woman because she is a woman as they think uh, there's cisgender people who will have transgender friends and out of out of respect do not call Chris a woman while others out of respect do call Chris a woman whatever I say I will lose whatever I say it will be met with with criticism kind of equally strong I think so this is just the way it is and feeding Chris's delusion uh, some people also said this argument like if I call Chris a woman then Chris will continue to be a woman as opposed to the previous 43 episodes where I called Chris a man like if I if I continue to call Chris a man did 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 you think that Chris would stop being a woman? I don't understand that logic at all. And since I started calling Chris a woman in the series, Chris actually commented on one uh, on one of the videos saying, "Oh, finally you got the uh, pronouns right. Good on you, Gino. Better late than never." And so so it kind of implying that Chris did want me to refer to her as a woman even even back from part 1 onwards, but she didn't really call me out on that at all. So I, I don't know. What's your favorite food? I do like Chinese food a lot. I like it spicy, but not too spicy. <laughs> so, Say some reason. Because my, my <laughs> because my girlfriend's Chinese and she and she makes great Chinese food, and I go to Chinese restaurants with her, especially Chinjarosu. I like that one a lot. <laughs> and Yurinchi. Look those up if you want. What's the dumbest question someone's asked you about about Chris Chan? That's pretty good, man. I, I, I do get some not well thought out comments and questions on my on my videos. That's a good one. Recently I got one about the Kiwi Farms. Asking what the Kiwi Farms is. I keep I keep hearing it, but can you tell me what, what is the Kiwi Farms? Like this this was on part forty five comments and like well I explained this in part forty one or something. So lots of people ask not well thought out questions. In my videos because they decide to skip a lot of them or just start from part 35 like why just watch the whole thing if you want to of course I mean but if you if you choose to knowingly start like part from from part 40 please expect that there's some information a lot of information in the previous episodes that you don't know about so please don't ask about what you don't know in part 40 because it'll all be explained if you just simply watch all of them. Please watch all 40 hours, please. It's not it's not that difficult, come on. Is there any way for you to do full subtitles on the episodes for your narration as well as the rest? Sometimes it's hard to get what you or the others are saying. Hmm, well, I do have the, um, I think I still have the auto-generated captions on YouTube videos. I think that's still available. Um, as far as manually adding subtitles for everything, that's honestly a bit too much work for me. Uh, sorry about that, but I think the the auto-generated captions are the best that you can do. I mean, they're, they're very accurate now. Back when they first kind of started, back in 2015 or so, people on the Kiwi Farms are, are posting screen caps of the latest Chris videos and the auto-generated captions below it, and it's complete nonsense. But now it's getting really scarily good. I, I don't think it's a problem anymore. By the time this documentary is completed, you will have created one of the longest video biographies on an individual, and perhaps one of the longest non-experimental documentaries in general. Will you be submitting the completed series to a record-holding places like Guinness or any art houses? I kind of feel like it's better to keep this more down low, because the reason the first channel got terminated because I applied to get it monetized, and they reviewed my videos, and I got three strikes for bullying. Maybe because I featured bullying in the videos. Not that I was personally bullying, but I featured bullying in the videos, and that's not okay. And now here I am, quietly, quietly making the videos. <laughs> up to far, up to part 46 now. I got 100,000 views, and no one noticed. I'm probably not gonna get my uh, diamond play button or, or, or whatever. Or just silver. I don't know. But I'm, I don't think I'm gonna get a play button if I'm not in the partner program, I think. So uh, let's see how long I can keep this going. Why did you go to China? Well, that one time I went to China was uh, to celebrate New Year's with my girlfriend's family. I was visiting them and meeting them for the first time. And I'll be going back to China sometime in May, I think, of next year. For like 
full-time basis and start up a business there, hopefully. That's the plan. Can you tell us the story of how you ended up in Japan doing music? Well, I, I went to Japan to become a teacher, because I like teaching. And, uh, and I like Japanese culture, too. And I'm doing music. I've, I've been doing music before Japan, too. Uh, started in Dublin first. Released maybe f three or four albums before in Dublin. And then I released some albums in, uh, in Japan as well. And I hope to be doing lots more music here and in China. Everybody has asked so many great questions, so I'm sure this one isn't original, but if you were to try to get a job, assuming you don't already have one, and your employer saw the series, how do you think they would feel? Do you think they would be worried you're an insane man plotting to kill some autistic guy or something else? With love, Likui. Um, they don't know about my channels on YouTube, at least, because they don't know my real name. I mean, my uh, YouTube name, I mean. You don't know my, my real name, that's what I mean. And if they saw that, they probably wouldn't think that much of it, like, Oh, Sugoi, cool, 100,000 subscribers, that's a, lot, that's a lot of content. They probably wouldn't re delve into that all, that all that much, you know? Probably not. I hope not. If you could go back with the accumulated knowledge and skill, would you change your presentation style any? High production value, lower interviews, face cam, add this, omit that. I personally find that after working on something for a bit, I look back at the start and think, damn, I should have done this, this, that, this, and that instead. That definitely happens to me with music, especially. Every time I make a new album, I, th I feel like I am the best that I've ever been. And that happens with every album. And of course, a year later, I look back at my previous albums and I think to myself, what the hell was I thinking? This, uh, this sounds abso absolutely terrible. So that's, that's why I have to remix and remaster everything again, release it again, which is kind of, which, which is kind of fun too. But I wish it wouldn't happen as much because I, I keep improving, I think. And some things that I would change about the documentary definitely would be um, addressing the, the trolling personas more clearly, as in... There was this one specific person, Troll, who played Clyde Cash. But I should make it more clear that he was also Greg Mays. He was also Miyamoto. He was also Reggie fils -Aimé, and And he was also Vivian G. Most importantly, the Troll started life with Christian as Vivian G. And then with was Greg Mays and, my, and Miyamoto. And then Clyde Cash eventually. I mean, this one specific Troll. So, some, some people think that, you know, there's all like separate people but I, th I, I wish it would be more clear that they were the same person likewise Alec Benson Leary and Jackie at least in the emails is the same person and Lars in the call I don't get I, I don't understand I don't understand this people have been perceiving Liquid Chris as this amazing Sherlock Holmes-esque master of disguise but no he wasn't he was just Liquid Chris and that's it. Maybe he was in some of the mumble calls as well. I don't know, but he was liquid, and that's it. He was not Lars. Lars was Alec Benson Leary again, and I I don't understand how people think. Oh, so obviously it sounds just like Liquid Chris. It doesn't at all. It sounds exactly like Alec. Come on. And Jackie on the phone call. I understand it sounds a lot like Casey. Yeah, but it's not because Casey hated Alec because Casey wanted. To her and Liquid to be the ending of the of the trolling sagas like this is how it ends this is like the final moment of trolling for Chris like showing that pr prestige I think and then Alec came along and then she really hated that because it kind of started things up again so yeah I think that's about it why do you sound and act so much gayer in your live videos I don't know man just just the way I am this is this is the natural me I it's actually not quite natural me because natural me is is me, um, chatting. What? You heard that? Yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> I'm 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 kind of like pseudo professional natural me. I'm more relaxed, of course, than the than the serious Christian voice that I do. But yeah, I guess it's just me. I'm kind of flamboyant, you might say. And finally, we reach the pinned comment, the pinned question. It's from Quickville Garden herself. Sonichu, I mean, Sonichu allegedly speaking through Christine's body. So here's what she wrote. 
he wrote, sorry. Hey Gino, I, Sonichu, offer a sentiment of support and kind thoughts in response to this. Congratulations, dude. But I do have a question as well. Feel free to get really metaphysical about it. Break your own fourth walls. Given every single possibility between this and all the other dimensions in this Omega timeline set we live in, including that Mama Christian herself, being the OC of OCs, could also have been a creator of all original creators, including yourself, if not that one major influential aspect, what do you feel is the most significant factor that attracts everyone's attention, including yourself, to her? In short, what do you feel and think is the attraction, and what makes you fascinated about Christian? That's that's kind of a lovely comment. Thank you so much, Sonichu. Um, so basically, <laughs> uh, Sonichu redirects my my opening questions back to me from either Chris or Sonichu back to me it's kind of kind of amazing uh, so in short what do I feel is the the attraction what 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 keeps me fascinated uh, the attraction is is that the story of Christian came about during a very interesting time on the internet of course because this this could not technically really happen in real life as as much as it did here um, there's difficult time on the internet where Kind of, it was kind of like a Wild West situation where it was a lot more um, focused on trolling and bullying and saying whatever the hell you want without without any, any consequences. And people were getting in touch with the internet and posting videos and showing themselves off online a lot without maybe understanding the consequences of what bad things might happen to them. You know, all the, all the bullying that uh, Chris, Chris took from the trolls. It's a like, wonderful mix of Believe in Self mixed in with Troll's ambitions to work against or for that belief to create this sort of fictional universe for Chris, which Chris ended up believing wholeheartedly recently. Um, it's, a, it's like a product of its time, really. You can't really replicate it these days because I think the internet has now a lot more safeguards against this sort of carry-on. And... Um, and Chris is a is a very unique individual. I think you might you might know that very well. He's very unique, very um a, pro a, a product of his own upbringing, and of his own autism, and that's what keeps me fascinated. Is that it's almost like a fictional universe created artificially in a in a real life universe, you might say. Um, and I can understand how this can get really metaphysical because I I kind of feel like the the trolls and Chris kind of helped each other to to create this uh, fictional universe for each other, though some people believed in it a lot more than others, and that's I think a big reason why Sonichu slash Christine might think the same way about being the uh, creator of a uh, of a uh, of real creations because they are alive. In a sense, if you if you believe in it, they are alive. The characters you might treat them as alive to an extent, to an extent. I think it's a bit too much to say that they do exist in in an alternate dimension. I don't believe in that at all. They do exist as much as you want them to exist. It's all up to you. It's all up to the the human mind, each individual brain, what you think. It's all up to you, whether you want to improve yourself, whether you want to go down this path or that path, whether you want to listen to your superiors or not, it really is all up to you, and your world is whatever you want to make of it, be it intentionally want to make of it or unintentionally want to make of it, consciously or subconsciously, and that's the story of why I find it fascinating. So finishing with that deeply metaphysical thought. I want to say thank you very much for everyone commenting and watching my videos. Especially thank you so much for Sonichu and Christine for for keeping it up and offering me their congratulations as well. If you're interested in supporting me, please check out my Patreon. Link is in the description down below. There's some tasty perks in there for you. And if you want to check out my music channel, please check out Gino Samuel in the description or Gino Samuel 3 for all the documentaries that are not about Christian, and I'm eager to make more of all three channel contents. Maybe there's a Geno 4 in there somewhere. But um, for now, 
thank you so much for for getting us to 100k and um here's to youtube for for ignore me for as long as you did thank you so much <laughs> and as always see you around